Hey art folks, so today I'm going to do a swatch with me of the Roman Schmal colors, handmade colors from Poland and I'm like so excited <laughs> to do this because I was just played with these like a tiny little bit and they look absolutely gorgeous. So I haven't really played with most of these colors, but I couldn't help myself on a couple of them. So I like I absolutely had to do a swatch with me. So these are really my first first impressions of all of these colors and Rum was so kind to send me these paints. So this brand just came out last year in November. So they haven't been on the wide market for very long, but okay, let's just see what's up, okay? <laughs> so this brand also has a lot of really unique pigments, pigments that are not in any other watercolor brand that I'm aware of. One of those is this color, Aquarius Yellow. They're full pans, by the way. Looks like the color doesn't move very much. So this is Aquarius Yellow PY168. I'm using a new brush. I might use my old brush. Let's see. Yeah, I guess maybe there's no ox gall in here. The payment, the paints are um, very moist, kind of like M. Graham paints. You know how they're never going to dry, that kind of consistency. This is so pretty. Oh man. That's just gorgeous. I want more yellows. So this is PO59. This is also a unique color. Permanent orange. It's nice orange. The colors are very bright. I love that. But yeah, I definitely think they're not super active paints. You can kind of see it's just staying put. So if you like paint that just kind of like explodes across the page, that's not it. It's like very manageable paint. Benzamidazol orange. A lot of modern pigments in this line, which I think is really cool. Oh, that's interesting. So I have this. It's a little redder than the version I have. I think. Uh, obviously I'm going to be doing also a full review of these, but I wanted to just do a first impressions. It's a really strong color, but I think I expected it just to be a little bit brighter. I mean, it's looking like it's moving a little bit more. Depends, I guess, on the color. But either way, they're still not like exploding like core or something like that. Oh, I should be a lot more gentle with this. I thought I was working with my Synthetic brush. This is a really nice version of this. Yeah, like so you can see, this one is not quite as saturated. This is a bit more saturated. So next is Anthraclinone Scarlet. This is another color that's unique to this line. PR 168. Okay, so okay, this one that goes all over the place. This is a quite nice like real red color. It's a little on the orangey side. It's really nice. I've never used this pigment before. I can see myself using that. I'm not really a big fan of reds, but I, I like that one. Clinacridone magenta. This is a color, you know, like there's some colors that you've tried a ton of. So like this French ultramarine and stuff like that. You basically know what they should look like. Oh, this is like a really, like when you get like magenta ink, that's what this looks like. That's really interesting. Really cool on the purpley side of things. I really want to see how this mixes. Nice. Very nice. Next we have Cherry Quinacridone, Quinacridone. I really like this color. I have it in Dale or Rowney, but I know that that version is maybe not the best formulated, so it would be really cool if I could replace it with this version, if this is nice. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, it's nice. It's like candy. It's a little, a little murky. I can see on the line. It's not as um, clear as you'd expect all canacodons to be, but it's really pretty. I'm curious to see what it'll look like when it dries, if it will still have a little bit of that murkiness or not. 
really active in water. Yeah, I like cotton candy. I get a lot. Yeah, I need to play around with that one. This is not a unique kitten, but it's uh, not really seen in a lot of colors. Aquarius Red PR 214. The only people who have this one are Old Holland. Outside of them. I wanted to try all the colors that had Aquarius in the names because kind of like, you know, how you have like Windsor Red and stuff like that. It seems to be the colors that the brand is most proud of. So this is like your more ready red. Obviously, semi-opaque, maybe. Quite dark. Very powerful. Actually, I'm curious about how this would compare with Windsor Red. But yeah, that's... That's definitely red. <laughs> that sounds so funny. Like, yeah, duh, it's red. Here you have Minnow Violet. This is one of the few multi-pigment mixes. I like that the multi-pigment mixes are for special reasons. Like, to have special effects. Because almost all the colors in the line are single pigment. So this is probably similar to Rose of Ultramarine. Really nice deep purple. So this, I guess as it dries, should separate out. I have to see it later. Mast on it's almost black. These are really just like so much so far, just fun to work with. Just feel nice. Next color is French Ultramarine. I played around with this a little bit and I'm pretty excited about it because it looks really nice. Like maybe the nicest Ultramarine I've seen yet. Ah, <laughs> it's so much. They put too much water. And I feel like you really gotta let the paint settle with this before you really know what's going to happen. It doesn't immediately look like what it'll be when it dries is a pretty big difference. And already look at that blue, it's so pretty. Thalo blue, red shade. This should be nice and cool and staining and transparent. Is the idea. Looks like it is. It's really nice. Very luminous. Ooh. Gotta make sure to wash out my brush really well. That phthalo's sticking on it a bit. Okay, so next, phthalo turquoise. Always a really fun color. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. That's really nice. I think it's the same basic hue as the Schmincke one. Oops, I not my lines are quite a bit. Too excited. Um, which is nice. Next is ocean blue, which is supposed to be a perfect sort of blue for painting the sea or the ocean. It's a two pigment mix. Saw some paintings with it that were absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit more opaque. That would be from the PBR24, which is a bit more on the opaque side. It spreads really nicely. And I like the shade. Like I said before, in order to see the color separating, I think I have to wait until it's dry. It's not one of those that shows that off from the beginning. I'm really excited about these next two colors also. They look really beautiful. I'm a really big fan of any kind of natural looking granulating greens. So this is Hooker's Green, PY150 and PB27. This kind of reminds me of, um, no, not quite Serpentine Genuine. It's quite cool underneath that's going to be that PY150. And it looks just like really mossy. I like it already. I can see this already starting to separate, so that's really cool. And then we got Aquarius Green. 
similar to this one, but not exactly. Ooh, that's really dark. In the pictures and in the swatches, I felt like these didn't look very different. But that's pretty big difference already, right? Ooh. I just like how that moves. That's really pretty. That's really nice. I can't wait to see how that dries. Now we're basically we're onto the earth colors. I feel like it's already almost done. I don't even know how that happened. So this is Venetian Yellow Earth, which is PY43. The last one was with PY150, PBR25, and PB29. So obviously not the most transparent of earths. A little cloudy. It's really nice and bright though, but yeah, a little milky looking. Kind of looks like sand. I mean, yeah, it's dirt, but like it really just looks like sand. That's cool. And it kind of moves like sand. Okay, next is Clinacridum Gold Hue. Very curious about this because so far I haven't been particularly impressed by any substitute Clinacridum Golds. Oh! Uh, this is actually an entirely different color. I was going to be very sad. Um, <laughs> this is Natural Sienna White. We'll have to come back to Clinacridone Gold towards the end. Okay, for a not Clinacridone, <laughs> this is pretty. <laughs> also a bit Okay, this dried actually really nice and much more transparent. Quinacridone Burnt Sienna. This is really orangey and obviously very spreading everywhere. Nice version, just what you'd expect, I think. Red Ochre, PR102. I like that this brand uses the 102s instead of the 101s. The difference is that the 101s are synthetic iron oxides and these are the actual natural earth pigments. And that's the same thing, the difference between um, PY42 and PY43. PY42 is a synthetic oxide and 43 is a natural earth pigment. This is a really nice color. It's actually really similar to the Quinn Burnt Sienna, or at least more than I would expect for an earth color. Really nice and bright. Mummy Transparent Red, like, that's just a fun name, isn't it? I'm kind of curious about what the mummy part is about. There's also an orangey brown, really saturated. True to its name, quite transparent. Don't know what the mummy is about still though, but it's nice. Now transparent brown, it's just supposed to be brown. I think it's not supposed to granulate. It's a little warm, not exactly neutral, transparent. Kind of ready. Nice brown. Reminds me of a chestnut. Italian burnt sienna, PBR7. Yeah, a lot of warm brownie colors in my selection of colors. I chose some of these colors and some of these colors were chosen for me, which is really kind. So this is a unique palette. You can't buy exactly this like this. Next is hematite PR102. Ooh, okay, well that's, yeah, that's a hundred percent opaque, isn't it? Like that line's just gone, just, just dead. Okay, so <laughs> guess we know if that's transparent or opaque. This is not exactly what I would think of when I think of hematite. It's cool. I mean, you know, you really get the feeling that you're painting with like clay. It's actually kind of nice. I just kind of want to keep swiping back and forth because it just feels so smooth. All right, moving on. By the way, that just filled up my paint water. Kaput Mortem. I'm really excited about this. You guys know I love any kind of hematite like this. I like this. This is nice too, but like this. That's becoming a little more transparent. Let's see what it's like when um, it dries. So I could put more to 
This paper, unfortunately, is not the best paper for showing off granulation. This is a Fabriano satin. It would have been nice to have had it on a different paper. This doesn't show it off the best. This is also really opaque. Iron, blood, dead sort of color. I like the kaput mortem. When I first started watercoloring, I feel like I didn't see this color very often, but now I see it pretty often. I wonder why it became more popular. Yeah, that is deep. But it doesn't have exactly the same kind of creamy feeling that the other hematite has. Isn't that interesting? So cypress, burnt umber. I really like umbers. Cypress umbers are pretty cool. Ooh. Yeah, we've got a lot of super dark colors at the end here. Yeah, that's like chocolate. Really nice. All right, here's the home stretch. Just a couple of colors left. So Van Dyke Brown, genuine Van Dyke Brown. Let's see if it behaves like Van Dyke Brown. Should have like a nice granulation to it and separation. Yeah, that looks like Van Dyke Brown. This is basically peat. And that's what it looks like. It looks nice. This one I can actually see it separating before it's even drying. And then the last one. The second least second to last. Aquarius black. So like lunar black. And yeah, that's gonna granulate a lot. You're gonna see that in a sec. It doesn't move a lot. Okay, and since I messed up and I missed Clean Gold, we're gonna add it here at the back. Now you can really see the PY150 coming out underneath. Mm. Yeah, I'd have to compare it with a swatch of genuine clinacodone gold to see how I really feel about it. It's very bright at the least. There's some, some that look quite muddy. This doesn't look muddy. It definitely has that glowing feel. That's for sure. Okay, now that the colors are dry, let's talk about them a little bit. So this Aquarius yellow is really beautiful. It's really bright. I really love how it looks even after it has dried. I definitely want to play around with this color some more. These oranges are okay. I don't know if I was just getting used to the color or what, but they seem pretty light when they dried. Some of the colors, I think, uh, have a bit of wax residue from the wax paper that was on them. And once you kind of get rid of that, they re-wet much better. I mean, they're honey-based. But I might have had a bit of an issue with that because these are my very first time trying these. The magenta here is really nice and vibrant. You can see that all of these colors are pretty darn staining and want to hold on to the paper. This is a nice looking magenta. I really love this cherry quinacridone. It doesn't have the issue that the Dollar Rowney one does. It has like this weird texture. This one is nice and smooth. Although I guess you can kind of see here in the mask tone that it might start to get a bit of that texture, but not the same way. Aquarius red is really nice. And unfortunately, I'm gonna probably do a swatch so that you can see the really nice granulation of this. But you can see the separation of the quinacridone magenta and the ultramarine here. This is a really nice French ultramarine. You don't really get to see the beauty of the granulation here, but you can see that it's nice and strong. Good thalo blue. Really beautiful thalo turquoise. And again, you can't exactly see the granulation with the ocean blue here, but you can see it a little bit. It's got a little bit of like darker brown tone that gives it like a feeling of the depths of the ocean. I really like that a lot. These two greens, you can see how this is going to be like such a beautiful color for foliage. Kind of in love with this already. This looks a lot like a Naples yellow, actually, this Venetian yellow earth. 
Remember I said that it felt like painting with clay? Look at how it's dried. It just has this kind of like gloopy, solid feeling that you may not want in your paints, but I kind of like it. I don't know. Let us see. This Quimbert and Sienna looks really pretty. This natural Sienna light looks nice. If you don't like the gloopiness of this one, this is a pretty good alternative. Also, even though the colors have not been moving tons, now that I see them drying, for example, the thalos move as much as you'd expect them to move. Ultramarine doesn't move very much, this Merino Violet doesn't move, but the thalos and the cranacodones are moving pretty well. Red ochre and mummy transparent red looking nice. I like this one a little more than this one. This though looks like really nice for painting animals. Transparent brown is a little warmer than I'd like it to be. I'm not sure. I'd have to compare with the Daniel Smith version. I think they have a version of this, but it is nice and transparent. This Venetian yellow earth is also quite opaque. Um, it's not super opaque, but it's pretty opaque. This is super duper opaque, this hematite, but not as opaque as it was when it went down. So that's an interesting thing to see. Like they, These paints change a lot once they dry. But you see this one actually remained really dark and you can't see the lines. But you can see a little bit of shine from how thickly I applied it. It's not really bad, but it's just like a little satin. This is really pretty. You can see the granulation even on this paper. It's very purplish. I'm going to swatch this out, I think, again. And this is just like, you know this is going to be crazy. I didn't think I'd expect this to be so granulating, but it really is. This texture is from the paper. I have to get <laughs> some more cold press paper. So Van Dyke Brown. I wish this color wasn't fugitive. It lists this as a non-fugitive color, but everything that I ever heard says that Van Dyke Brown is a fugitive color. But I really love the texture here. You can't really see the texture on here so much. You see these two colors lift a lot really, really deep. And this Queen Gold is really pretty, actually. Again, I'd have to compare it to Genuine Queen Gold, but it's quite pretty. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna just swatch out some of these. So hopefully you can see the granulation a little better. This paper is, I think, a little more nice and textured. So this is the mineral violet. I think normally mineral violet means manganese violet, but in this case, it's a mixture of colors. I also want to show you this nice ultramarine. You look at how nicely it moves on the page. It's really pretty. I'm just like in love with this. I just want to keep playing with it. I don't normally feel that way, but I'm just like, this is so pretty. <laughs> okay, so after that, we have Ocean Blue. That's really beautiful. And hooker's green, really pretty sap green on the yellow side. I'm just having so much fun making these little squiggles, honestly. And aquarius green, which is a little deeper. Oh, that's really nice. So after that, we're going to look at Kaput Mortem. Should I drop a little water in these as well so you can see that? Let's do that too. I just don't want it to be too much water, but that might help you see 
a change in the color. That mineral violet looks really gorgeous. Okay, so that's Kaput Mortem. Then we have Cypress Burnt Umber, one of those colors that snuck up on me. I didn't expect it to be this nice. And it's nice that it's such a cool granulating brown that isn't doesn't have the light fast problems of Van Dyke Brown. Then Van Dyke Brown. Oh, we don't have enough space. The Aquarius Black. Yeah, look at that Van Dyke Brown. You can see like how much cooler it is than the Burnt Umber. Kind of more like a raw umber. I like they have a German greenish umber. I like to try that too in the buff titanium. But doesn't that like already look like a tree trunk? I'll just add a drop of water in each of these so that you can see what it does. So Kaput Mortem, Cypress, Burnt Umber, and Dyke Brown. And that's just on the side here. And look at that, that's just so nice. Add Aquarius Black. Without even like taking any time to settle, it's just so textured. Just a drop of water. Look at that. That looks insane. It's so pretty. So I think you can get a much better idea of what the granulation looks like now on these papers. I mean, okay, look at that and look at that. Yeah, it's totally different. So be aware your paper changes your results and you can also see that I feel like everything looks much more vibrant. So we'll see what these look like when they dry. By the way, looking at the extra swatches in my sketchbook, they look a lot more vibrant and bright than on the Fabriano satin paper. My sketchbook is on Bockingford paper, which is 100% cellulose, so that just tells you how much of a difference your paper makes, and um, I don't know if I would recommend the Fabriano satin paper, actually, just based on that, because this is a lot brighter on the Bockingford, and I love the Bockingford paper and it's a lot cheaper but it's pretty good and that's why I use it as my sketchbook paper so I think it would always be good to remember the difference that your paper can make. So before I was a little worried that the paints dried down less saturated but I don't really think I see that issue when I see it on the Bockingford. So so far I am super duper excited about these paints. This is just my first impression. I haven't done a lot of mixing with them, glazing, all of that stuff that's going to be in a fuel review when it's coming up. But there's already some colors that are really standing out to me. The other colors perform the way that they should. They have some extremely unique colors in terms of like granulation and also pigments that are not available in any other line. Most of the colors are single pigment colors. The movement and handling is great. If you don't like sticky paints, these are not going to be for you. They're sticky. That's just what's up. If you don't like staining paints, these might not be for you, at least on my paper. These pigments are pretty staining generally. Obviously, there's some of them that are less staining, but overall, they seem to be more on the staining side. Not as bad as core. And they are one euro more than White Knights per pan, but way better. At least, I think so. If you want to know my opinions about White Knights, we've been through that. I'll have a link to that video. But these are way more affordable than any artist grade paint that I have access to. And at the moment, it looks like this is gonna be the paint that I would recommend to anyone if it's available to them, because right now it doesn't have the greatest availability, but there are some websites you can get it from. I'm gonna also have the links to all of that in the description below. So right now I am super duper impressed, guys. And I don't say that particularly lightly. I can see myself painting with this pretty often. Again, this is first impressions. Gotta do more testing, mixing, layering, glazing. 
all that jazz, but right now I'm pretty pumped. So I hope that that was fun. I know that there haven't been a ton of videos about this brand yet since it's really new and doesn't have a ton of distribution, but I wanted to get that out there because I think these are so cool. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to my patrons. If you want to see scans of these and information that I don't share anywhere else, then you definitely have to go to my Patreon page. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more stuff like this. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. And until then, be gentle with yourself. Bye.